Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. Hmm. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, November 19th, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. I'm Larry Rhodes or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Just add water. Okay. Sounds like something a, a biologist would say. <laughs> and w- with us, our special guest today is Keith Semple. Welcome. Greetings. Great to be on with you guys. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in the middle of the Bible Belt, Knoxville, we have a group of over 1,000 of us, actually 1,100 now. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about us after mid- the mid-show break, so stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Oh, we got a battery of them, including oxygen deprivation, near-death experiences, and the scariest of them all, blind taste test studies with Coca-Cola. But we'll get all of it. We'll get all of it. We'll get all of it one thing at a time. First thing I wanted to do is get through my favorite part of today's show, and that's catching up with everybody. I'd love to see how everyone has been and just see the general vibe before we get into the meat and potatoes of the show. One of the things I'm excited about is I've been playing a video game called Baldur's Gate. Been loving it. And um, honestly, it's been one of the things where I'm really, truly, ex- I go to work and then I come back home from work. I go work out and then I get back in front of my computer and I'm just excited to jump back into this fantasy land and just have a couple of hours before nine o'clock be- before right. I get too like tired and like start making really bad decisions and then coming back <laughs> to it the next day. But like in a really, really healthy way, I think it's just a, a incredible playground that they set up. I've always said that for video games, they keep making things bigger and wider and more expansive and larger, more levels, more detail. But it's not so much that I want a bigger orange. I just want a tastier orange. I just want like an orange that's like sticky and has like a good flavor. I don't care if it's really tiny. I just want a good orange, like a good orange slice even. Full of content, in other words. Yes. No, well, not co- so much full of content. I don't want the Ubisoft approach where they just keep loading it. I just want quality like from every corner of looking at it. And when I play Baldur's Gate, regardless of whatever I do, whether it's just exploring some weird mountain, going to a different part of my map, having conversations with my uh, members, having cool dialogues, or just sorting my inventory and just reading some of the descriptions for things. I'm always rewarded with my experience by the time that I'm done. And I never feel like I waste time. I laugh. I feel sick with some of the decisions I've made. Yeah. There's things uh, that I dread. There's things that I look forward to. It's just a really fun time to to enjoy. Uh, and so, yeah, that's my that's my fun thing. Larry, I would love to catch up with you. How you been? Don't just say video games and 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 more video games. This is not the video game show. I'm just being I'm just being ironic. Sorry. I'm afraid it is. <laughs> <laughs> How you been? No, Larry? oh, good. Um, no, I've been playing computer games, uh, specifically Starfield. Okay. But I really don't have much choice these days because my knee has been giving me such trouble, such trouble, in fact, that I, in two days, no, actually tomorrow, I get a oh. knee replacement surgery. So that's going to be fun for the next six, eight weeks. So I won't be riding my motorcycle or any of that stuff. And is this your uh, first step to becoming a cyborg? Yeah, I asked them to put new pneumatics in it, you know, so I could jump higher, run faster, that type of thing. No, wouldn't. Wouldn't even entertain the topic. <laughs> no, have they even said like, "Hey, we can put little gravings on the metal that, before we put it in your body"? Like, if if they ever find your body, just be like, uh, "This is where my soul is located," or like, "Here, please, please, uh, mm, put some arrows, no. or put some mystic runes on it, or something like that." No, I didn't dies. think about that. Maybe on the, when I go in for surgery, I'll tell them to. Okay, 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 fantastic. <laughs> Keep simple. Good to hear from you again. How are you guys? Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, it's good to be yeah. back. Yeah, How welcome. you been? How have been the shows and how's been the family? Uh, we've been great. I feel bad now talking about my weekend because 
Larry's talked about his bum knee, and uh, I, uh, I had a fantastic uh, weekend there. I had to, uh, I did a show in Miami on Friday and a show here in Chicago land on Saturday night. So I had a bit of a whirlwind uh, are, are you a, weekend. Are you a magician or something? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of show? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I performed actually with the lead singer of In Excess on Friday night. Um, uh, he found me by a mutual friend that knows me in the area and he he's doing this thing called rock and roll team building it's like a huge big corporate event workshop type thing and we were doing a uh basically a showcase down in miami so he flew me down and we practiced for an evening and then did the whole day friday and then i literally finished on the stage at 5 30 got in the taxi and was back at the airport at 6 30 and was on the flight back home and got up and did the show saturday and then obviously cool. that was only a few few hours yeah. ago and yeah. now i'm up with you guys so uh wow, it's we... been a real fun yeah. weekend well, but what did it was you a do total success so what what did you do about the language barrier irish and american uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> did they understand well, funny you enough okay? actually <laughs> Funny enough, uh, Kieran Kieran Gribben is the 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 guy who I was with, and he's actually Northern Irish. Oh, so it was he? really funny because this, we were talking and like to each other, and a few times people were just standing there, you know, with like blank looks on their faces because I didn't realize like I just dropped right back into full on broad, like mm -hmm. full broad and air, and like you know I'm like talking so fast, like nobody can understand a word I'm saying, like that's mm -hmm. and, and they're mm -hmm. just looking at us, and I was like, oh yeah, I should probably still kind of soften that a little bit even though i'm with another <laughs> northern irish guy <laughs> yeah yeah so. have you seen cool. enough of america to where uh cities start to blend to each other where when you like are in miami or chicago and another city you're like where am i again i forget like just show me where the walgreens is because i know there'll be a cvs right across the street <laughs> <laughs> just show me where the target is. you'll like walk to the target like, i've never been to this city i've never been to the target but i know exactly where i need to go to just like get the thing then and get right out like yeah. you ever that, start that's exact bad? yeah have you that's ever exactly it. especially it. sorry go ahead larry have you ever confused sioux falls with sioux city ah <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> I think that's the least of what that guy's confused. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would. I haven't done that before unless I did it on purpose as a joke. Yeah. yeah. You know, I haven't said the wrong place yet, mm -hmm. but you know, it's only a matter of time. Everybody does sure. it, right? Sure. 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 Where's the most exotic place in America that you've been? Help, maybe help me out. Maybe uh, that'll be a really good place for me. America has exotic yeah. places. Yeah. 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 I would mm -hmm. say. I would say so. Like, where's a place in America where exotic? You've got like, Whoa, this is not like any of the major big cities. I Las been. Vegas. You'd say maybe. Las Vegas. Okay, okay. Well, maybe you keep. Actually, it would be something you'd never think. Like, I actually thought that Colorado, because it actually has some decent terrain, was nothing uh, like any uh, other place. Like, yeah. basically, you would. When we first got there, we went up on uh, like a high rise parking yeah. garage, you know, or whatever you guys call them. And um, I, we, I was looking around and no matter where you looked, there was a there was no horizon, right? Because it was mountains. So like wow. you could not see the distance because there was a big mountain in your way. And that's what I'm used to at yeah. home. Of yeah. course. So like that, that was very mm -hmm. nice. And then Utah of all places was like Utah. my dream place to go to because I've wanted to go to the Salt Licks my entire life since I saw mm -hmm. like them doing the trying to break the speed records on there and I was like oh yeah. I, I gotta go see that so it's really weird what I'm interested in and I'd already gone with my dad back when I was a kid to do the whole you know Grand Canyon stuff and all that so I've seen that already where that, that would have been top of my list anything that's sciency and like I want to go learn you know I, I that was my you know, that's sure. what appeals to me. So, yeah. Keith, well, I had how a question. You... Go ahead. Right. Go on it. Okay. So, Keith had a question for you. You said you wanted to Colorado. Colorado, known for its high elevation. Did you have any issues with oxygen deprivation while you're up there? Good segue. I was, I was working oh, on one myself. I like what, <laughs> like what you did there. Um, <laughs> you know what? Not that I'm aware of, but then again, I have been an, an athlete, you know, for most of my life. Like, I've played. Um, uh, pretty high level tennis so like you can't really do that you know two three four arm long matches unless you're able to have a big lung capacity you know so like mm -hmm. i don't really notice it even when i was singing there uh in in denver and boulder i didn't notice it at all if you know what i mean but i'm sure some people did i think my bass player did i 
think Brian noticed that he mentioned it to me a couple of times. He's like, Ooh, it's a little hard on the old lungs. This, you know, but I, heard, he... but I heard it's mostly something that happens to you while you go to sleep. Maybe is that, is that it? Did he have hallucinations, maybe? <laughs> true, true, well, true. I, I, he he might actually have a little bit of sleep apnea, which I guess is a thing that if, uh, my old, um, well, he's not my old roadie. He still works for me from time to time. But my old roadie, you know, has the, the CPAP machine and yep. everything. And mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you can literally not breathe quite a few times throughout the night. Um, Very true. But, but it's funny because sleep deprivation fascinates me simply because it's also, in my opinion, the same similar thing as to what happens people who have near-death experiences because they go, oh, I'm I'm experiencing this. Well, I wonder why your brain's got like 60% less oxygen than it normally does. You're, I, and never trust, you would never trust anything that was running at 40% capacity. Why do you trust your brain? It's like, oh, everything else I've seen my whole life at 100% is not right. But everything that I just saw <laughs> it for the two minutes, my blood oxygen level was too low. So, oh, that's the truth. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you can recreate that scenario with drugs. I mean, the, you, you basically by, you know, taking if you're given certain cer substances, you can recreate that simply because of the, you know, it's a purely chemical thing. Things are shutting down. Your brain's going, wait, what can I switch off to keep maintaining a level of of cognizance, you know? Mm. And then people wake up and go, oh, I, everything I saw was so accurate. I'm like, oh, you might want to. Maybe, maybe not. I want to rethink <laughs> that. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I see. Uh, before we get to Larry, I just want to say, so it sounds like you're saying there's a connection between oxygen deprivation, sleep apnea, and some of the religious experiences that have been told uh, as like revelations that happen while people are unconscious, right? Near conscience. Yeah, for sure. Near I mean, conscience. just okay. just look at the um, the whole 60s thing with LSD, right? As an example, you know, the Catholic Church did their best to um, not, you know, like to basically make try to not have anybody take any kind of drugs because they were the people were reporting instances that were actually I, I like religious iconography. Essentially, the, mm. the things that people thought they'd saw that were mm. meant to be religious were actually just things that people naturally experience on psilocybin and these different chemicals, right? It's just basically brain states that you can initiate by taking the right chemical. Sure. And it's like, oh, but we can't have people thinking that, that you can get to that heavenly so-called state by, you know, so. Yeah. Larry, what do you got? Oh, I was just going to mention that you, you, Dot Tyrone, with your background in biology, uh, know that the brain uh, manufactures a lot. Yep. I mean, it fills in the gaps. If it doesn't have the input that it needs uh, for something, it may just, you know, manufacture things. Like you have a, a blind spot. Both of your eyes have blind spots in them that the brain constantly fills in with, uh, with tertiary data that it gets from the sides of the blind spot. Um, and you're, when you're going to sleep, not only are you losing consciousness, but your, your brain is shifting from a space of, of being able to have a lot of input, you know, from, from your hearing and your sight and all this other stuff to a state of not having any input. Now, when you're dreaming, you know, that the brain is just supplying all this input, but what about in the between that that's a state, like when you're going under and, uh, and the doctors on, on the surgery table. Or if you're uh, going under, just going to sleep, uh, a lot of times you'll imagine things happen. You'll hear voices, you'll hear sounds, um, you know, things like that, because the brain is is basically trying to fill in the input that it's not getting. Right. I also want to extend. Uh, um, so my background's in biochemistry. I have a mm -hmm. PhD in it, and um, it's not a bi brain chem it's not a brain surgery degree it, but it does give me some impression that our brains are very reliant on uh reception from external sources largely through chemical input and the cool thing is if i were to hold up like a, a blue pen or a green pen i got a green pen in front of me right now i'm wackling in front of the camera for our radio listeners i have <laughs> light from my uh light sources in my room they the light is composed of small particles called photons. Uh, they'll bounce off the pen. They'll go into my eye. My eye has light receptors that will like trigger and say, oh, I think it's this much of this color, this much of this color. I'm going to combine them together and send that input to my brain. My brain's high uh, responsible for the high cognitive function where it'll take that information and say, okay, it's, it's this color and it's this shape. I'm going to 
put some cognition together and say it's a pen. And that's my impression of a pen, right? Mm -hmm. So like I am taking patterns from my past. I'm taking the most uh, up-to-date information I can get from my body parts. And I'm coming to conclusions. I might be wrong, right? Like my brain might come up with the wrong conclusion, but it's largely just trying to work with whatever it can. The, The consequence of that is I'm working with what I'm informed by. And if I am misinformed or if I'm in a state where my brain can't necessarily make the best connections because I've impaired it or introduced additional, uh, uh, I would say, chemicals or or states of mind, my ability to like look at this and say, oh, it's a dragon. It's the same mm-hmm. pen. But now I'm like, oh, no, it's a snake. Oh, no, it's a cucumber. Oh, no, it's a pickle. <laughs> and it goes back to what Keith was saying. It's why would I trust my brain when it's in that much of a state? The <laughs> weird thing is, if I'm in a weird state and I'm not aware of it, then how can I even be aware that I can't trust my brain, right? Because now I'm in this double, uh, 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 double-bladed, or what's the right word for it? Um, double-edged. Uh, double-edged storage where I don't know what I don't know, and I don't know who I can trust, even if it's myself. My brain has become its own worst witness. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and I need to rely on it in order to yeah. connect dots for me. Larry, yeah. what do you think about that? Well, yeah, I think about ghost sightings and, and um, you know, monster sightings. They always seem to take place at dusk when your brain doesn't have the input that right. or at night that the uh, and your your possible your your brain state is is in a state of fear and a lot right. of times or at least tension. Um, and trepidation so that it, it, it may force, um, input to take certain shapes in other for, you know, for its, uh, evolutionary, um, role in trying to save your life, you know, so, so that you'll get the heck out of there. If it thinks, even thinks that it's something that might be dangerous, right? So it will project it and you will well, that- basically see what isn't there. That's what's ironic about the evolutionary process. Mm-hmm. says that the evolutionary process actually caused the ability to believe in imaginary things easier mm-hmm. because what it's the old adage of there's two guys and they they hear a bush rustle the people like us three we were dead because we'd go and, and investigate the bush rustling unless it was when <laughs> <'Cause we'd, laughs> uh, right but we'd be going to investigate the bush rustling going i am curious about yeah. the world yeah mm-hmm. the other people just ran the other way right and didn't even stop to think what it could be yeah. whereas mm-hmm. you know the neil degrasse tysons of the world would have been dead by the time they were five because they would they'd have gone you know their brain would have lit up with all these Chemicals mat- saying, go and check this out. The, what is this? Mat- what, what makes Let's it use a scientific Russell? method to understand what's behind right. it. Or the Madame so Curies. Of, right. <laughs> Madame, so or the Madame ironic. Curies of the world. <laughs> yeah. It's ironic that that's led to basically a, 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 a an entire race of people then, basically human race that are susceptible to that so easily. And because they fill in the blanks, like you were saying, Larry, you know, they fill in the blanks. Mm-hmm. of the rest yeah. of the story and that's the other thing actually that 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 leads to for me is memory and i've studied memory recently a lot and memory is so unreliable yeah so unreliable that it's not like even you know like um ha- uh what do they call it um bananas first hand uh first hand bananas, <laughs> bananas. First-hand first-hand bananas. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, eyewitness accounts. That's the word I was uh, looking for. Uh, I was uh, in trials are are notoriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes that's all you have, Sorry, so you have crap, to rely yeah. on it. Right. Right. And but 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 it's notoriously. You know, like they, they've done studies basically where um they've tested that and 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 it proves basically that they'll show a, a group of people. Yeah. Uh, you know, an event, and they'll all recall it. Right, 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 Some people right. will even get the like the color of the skin of the person that they saw wrong yeah, like yeah, yeah. that big of a Keith, change you know you're speaking to the choir here because i love i love the idea that you know you just went to miami you just went back to chicago and you were probably wearing a colored shirt let's say it was a blue shirt right you could probably reconstruct every single memory that you had last weekend and just make your shirt red or green like if you really wanted to you can just sit down and say i'm just going to pretend i had a blue hat on the entire time and you'll your brain's like great i love blue hats 
here's the memory, here's the lighting, here's the people you talk to, and action, because that's how your memory works. Your memory is a is a theatrical event of your brain just piecing together what it feels would fit a model of what happened in the past, but is not in any way an accurate representation or an objective recalling of the past events. And we don't have the capacity to be able to do that, but we do have the capacity to be very confident with a reconstruction that our brain is capable of making. And if you think you have a perfect memory, just pretend like you uh, did something or this earlier morning and what we're wearing a different colored shirt or had a mustache or had yellow socks on. You can make just as convincing a memory as you did otherwise. Like there's nothing stopping you from that. And again, it's just your brain doing what it does best, taking information, but piecing it together in a way that makes you feel happy, confident, and comfortable so that you can move on with the rest of your life and find more resources to eat, <laughs> eat, stay <laughs> safe, stay warm. And if you're lucky, procreate and move your genes on to the next society. Uh, because at the end of the day, evolution isn't a guided process. We just, it is a, it is a expansive trial and error where we try to just do what we can to get to the next step with no end goal in sight. We're just trying to get to the next step. And so, the idea that a society that doesn't cultivate good critical thinkers isn't as important as one that survives and move to just move on to the next generation is totally what evolution is all about. It's just get to the next step. And yeah. if you're lucky, but you, gotta, you make a society. And if you're yeah, lucky, well, maybe you have some scientists. But, but we, we have to keep in mind that uh, evolution has no goal. I mean, right. other than the preservation maybe of the chromosome, but there's no mind out there thinking I need to, preserve my chromosome it's just how evolution works it's a, more or less a mechanical process mechanical physical process of, of how uh, organisms um relate to their environment yeah you can replace the word evolution well, I, with just change because right. change doesn't have a goal it's mm -hmm. just changing there may have been a perfect human being in the past that was absolutely critically the best being for its environment and then next generation it changes anyway well that's what happened to our our the pre-humans, you know, they were, they weren't quite human, but in the environment changed and pushed us toward what we are now. Oh, I was just going to say that I love that example by Stephen Fry. He, mm -hmm. When you're talking about it, not be a, a guided process is like, I'm like all these people and the, you know, the religious will talk about, look at the trees and look at, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. our, our wonderful ability to regenerate and these type of things. Right. And I'm like, yeah, but Stephen Fry, he goes, yeah, but what about the larvae? that's only job is to burrow its way into a child's eyeball so mm -hmm. that it can gestate so that it can basically eat the inside of your eyeball so that it can procreate to or, you know or to live on and do it again you know or, or whatever excrete out of you right. and then go and do it again like there was no mind there's no guidance that could ever have gone you know what you know what i think we need you know mm. is these microorganisms like let's Let's make these tiny things and there'll be the smallest living creatures, but they can do the most damage of True. anything out there. A virus. Let's make a virus like nobody, no, in any way caring being would ever can even consider conceiving something like that, mm -hmm. you know? So it's one of those things where I, I get very frustrated whenever I, I meet somebody who is religious and also, I mean, I think it's still a step forward. They're religious and they believe in evolution. Yeah, but I mean, it's still a good step, but it's like now, now do the cognitive work to get of why mm -hmm. this part is a ridiculous part. Yeah, right. the compartment compartmentalizing their beliefs. Yes, absolutely. Mm. I would also say it makes sense that someone would look at the world and say that this seems like it's been built with some intention, because that's, again, what your brain does. You as a person build things and operate with intentions. Your actions are based off some sort of intent that you come up with first and then try to impact on the world. And so when you see things in the world, particularly if you live in a city where things have been planned out by a person in the past, and you're like, wow, this city, this street goes exactly to my house and back to my job and back to my house again. It's like, yeah, because someone put them there. But when you go out in the wild, you're like, okay, these coyotes that are attacking this school bus full of children <laughs> there has to be a plan behind that too right it's like no not necessarily because this is not uh the design that you are pointing at 
is simply just you trying to assume that there's been a construct or an intent behind everything that you see in the universe, including every single animal that exists and every single force of nature that we can observe. But the fact is we don't have a, we have no reason to believe that those um, intents exist because we'd have no reason to believe in a grand intenter who put those actions into place. And until we have a good reason to believe an intenter, uh, a means that we can test it, we are essentially looking at a process that's, that seems to be not necessarily cruel, but wholly uninterested in protecting the vulnerable, the weak, uh, uh, protecting those that right. need protection. Um, it is very much a cruel and uncaring world out there. And we are very fortunate to be able to survive in the states that we are right now. But uh, Keith, along with what you said with boring holes, viruses, diseases, you know, like infestations, parasites, like there are things that just exist where you think, man, like it would be so great if I had none of these things here, our quality of life would be so much higher. But that's not the goal of evolution again. The goal yeah. of evolution is just change. Yeah. Larry. Well, a lot of people think of how successful humans are in the world. Uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty much taking uh, control of our environment, which is good. We can kind of control the way that we go in the future, but we've only been around for 150,000 years. Mm. The cockroach has been around for millions of years, Mill uh, I guess 500 million years, a long time. Um, not only that, but you think about termites. There are more termites on the earth than humans by times 11 by weight. <laughs> Mm -hmm. by weight ah, by weight i okay. mean how successful sure. are they we never even think about them except as an occasional pest yeah yeah it's, it's funny we're talking about this because my my next week's podcast so my last uh, one of my first season is is wrapping up see, so episode 10 and it's all about evolution i basically just do like a uh what would you call it an idiot's guide to you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I always think about like I've already quoted Stephen Fry. I always think about the quote from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It has to be the best quote for explaining how silly it is to think that everything's designed for us is the whole, you know, the puddle. You've heard of the, right. the yeah. puddle quote where he's like the puddle becomes sentient and goes, oh, this this hole I'm in was is fits me so perfectly yeah. it must have been designed for me and mm -hmm. as he's contemplating this he's evaporating <laughs> you know and yeah. then right before he evaporates he yeah. goes oh i get it <laughs> it's brilliant yeah i love well, the we, example i got we need right. to take a break it's That's the bottom cool. of the hour this is the digital free thought radio hour and wozo radio 103.9 lpfm here in knoxville tennessee we'll be right back after this short break Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dowder Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 FM here, LPFM, sorry, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's just take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year now, and we have over 1,100 members. We have weekly in person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or for its pretty weather outside on the deck. Um, you can find us online in Facebook, meetup.com, or at our website, knoxvilleatheist.org. You can just Google Knoxville Atheists. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. Wombat, what do you want to pick up? All right. So how about we wrap up uh, our thoughts from the first half of the show, and then um, we can get into some blind taste tests, which I mean by, and I'll get into more detail, but the idea that your brain is an impressionable, squishy thing in your body. And it's not just when I say it's in your body, a lot of us like to say, here's your brain and point at their head. That is true. You do have a thing called a brain in there, but your brain is connected to almost every other part of your body through your central nervous system. It's connected to your eyes, where it receives eye information, your, your taste buds, where it gets taste information, your nose, all the way down to your gut, where it gets a bunch of hormones that are being produced down there to, if you're a guy, a testes, where it'll get additional uh, hormones that will trigger more muscle inflection and strengthen the rest of your body, down to your toes to, to, uh, to inform when you stubbed your toe which is weird because whenever I get hit 
in the balls, it's an immediate thing. But whenever I get stuck <laughs> in my toe, it's like, oh, this is going to hurt in like seven seconds. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh, oh there it is. I hate it. I hate it when I stub my toe. Dang we're what? We're wired different, Tyrone. It's the opposite for me. If I get if I get kicked in the <laughs> if so I get kicked get in the kicked nuts, in the balls, there's that good for like seven seconds, and then you fall. Oh, it's it's that it's that three seconds where you know it's gonna. I thought that happened to every guy. I must be different. <laughs> there's that pre delay where you're like, this is gonna really. Oh, there it is. Oh no, that's so weird. That's so weird. So okay, so brains are different. Yeah, that's another thing too. Brains are different. So wait, wait I just I do want to belabor the point. So you're saying when you stub your toe, it's an immediate pain sensation. Oh goodness, yes. Like oh, it's like wow, wow, the, wow. the 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 speed between stub and swear word is almost instantaneous. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense because your toe is further away from your brain than your 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 sexual organs, your balls. So That's I weird though. I thought I'm that was confused. every guy's experience. No, was I'm to just... have that delay reaction between getting uh, mine, hit in the mine nuts. Is more mine is further room. away from my brain. That's that yeah. is. I hope that's not something you're gonna have to talk to your doctor about like hey <laughs> when i get hit here i feel like when i get hit down here is that a problem <laughs> no he'll <laughs> probably just say like, no that's around? because that's that's where your brain is <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 okay anyway, um <laughs> yeah your brain's different your brain is impressionable and i loved what keith had said why do you not trust your brain where you're at 100 percent? you know you wouldn't trust anything else at 100 percent. so you know, don't don't come to grand conclusions. Honestly, here's my here's my takeaway. Don't be 100 percent about anything because you never know when your brain isn't working. Right. And you could never know. And it's never good to be. Well, lo logic. Yeah, logic dictates that at the end of the day, like we shouldn't you can if you say you're 100 percent sure on anything. I mean, it's pedantics, of course. Sure. I mean, you can be pretty 100% sure that the yes. sun's going to rise in the morning, but Absolutely. you actually still can't be 100% sure that it will happen because there's a day it won't. Right. <laughs> so, you know, so and and this idea of, um, you know, when somebody says to me, like, well, are you one of these, like, you know, um, atheists that, you know, is 100% sure, like, how can you be 100? And I'm like, no, I'm a hundred percent sure a god doesn't exist but i'm as close as you can get mm. with enough nines at the end yeah. of the well, decimal the thing point. about it is we're not talking knowledge when we're talking atheism we're talking belief now i don't know that there's any guys not we're talking about knowledge here and that is agnosticism mm -hmm. but i don't believe in any guys so that's atheism I'm a, i am an athe agnostic atheist so i don't know i don't believe yeah, but I think we would all, from what I can gather, would probably, in our heads, would be okay to say, not in an argument because we don't want the burden of proof, but we'd be okay to say to ourselves, we're pretty, pretty sure well, there is I, no God. You know, I'm, I'm, comfortable you, you know, saying, I'm comfortable saying there's no God in the same sense that a believer would say that there is a God, in which they sure. do all the time. So sure. therefore, I reserve the right to hold the counter position. Uh, and in yeah. my opinion would be like, you know, in certain circles, when I understand that people understand the context of how I'm speaking, I can say, I can say certain things without having to go through the, the multiple onion skin layers of defining every term that I mean, because I'm in a uh -huh. culture that already understands what I'm saying. So I get what Larry's saying. I also get what you're saying, Keith, too, because like when you talk out with the public, particularly on a podcast and you're worried about people taking snippets of what you're saying out of context to, to bolster their aims and, and further misinform other people, I can understand the need to be clear, clear and use words that have meaning. In my opinion, it's just a consequence of a very terrible communication system. Because even though we are using words, we are making sounds and we are assuming you understand what I'm thinking just based on the sounds that I'm saying. So even if I explain myself with full intricate clarity, I'm hoping that you understand what I'm saying based on the sounds that I'm coming out with my mouth. It's a very weird system. Convenient in some senses, woefully uh, not in others. Though, speaking of weird comments that you can make, we did get some from our comment for, from our uh, commenters. I wanted to go over a couple of them. Thank you guys so much for leaving a comment. Uh, this comment came from Exvangelical Carol. 
Pro said, <laughs> 100% like I agree with you guys. Uh, thank you so much for making this post. That was from our show, Give Me a Reason. From our show, God's Leadership Qualities, which was one month ago, we got a comment that said, you guys had mentioned that, uh, oh, you guys had talked about how we pay taxes to help having good health care system and free schools. Don't you know that Christians also pray for that too? <laughs> yeah. And uh, would you explain why you're laughing? I mean, we understand, but go ahead. Okay, so I'm I and again I'm I, I read it so I make sure I don't say anything rude on the show, but um the idea is on on God's leadership qualities we had talked about potentially um uh how it's important for people to have health care and like take care of ourselves and give us good guidance and rules but we never really get those leadership qualities from god god's just like maybe some rules and disappears and we have to do the best with some arbitrary rule system with a bunch of trap doors and consequences with physics phenomena but the idea of us wanting ha to have good health care and free education um we pay taxes to be able to support that. And uh, what the 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 uh, the commenter has mentioned is that, well, don't you know Christians also pray for that too? <laughs> well, yeah, but praying for it, um, <laughs> it's like, how do you feel like you're doing something without actually doing something? Sure. You know, sure, we pay sure. taxes and they use right. it for all kinds of different things that, that you know, that I don't approve of, and you don't approve of. A lot of people don't, but as a society, we're a very rich society. We right. should be able to take care of our citizens, and right. we are not. We are letting them flounder in their old age, uh, in their destitution. If they have no, uh, if they're uh, what crippled. I mean, yeah. we have we veterans. have some, you know, the veterans too. But I mean, we we have very little safety net in our society, so which. Therefore, we're failing our own citizens. Yeah. I just about... remember the first time I ever had a... Sorry, go ahead, Tyrone. Oh, no, I was just saying Keith came all the way from a place that had a good health care to, to wonderful, terrible USA to flying planes. And he's like, do I get a parachute? He's like, no, you don't get a parachute or anything like that. It's like... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to say is my first experience of the American health system was I had a bad hot dog. I think it was I I'd got I was on a hurry to a show. <clears throat> and uh, oh, actually, no, it was earlier in the day. I thought I'll just have a quick. Oh, there's a, like a little hot dog joint. It gave me food poisoning. And I was feeling bad and worse as the, the day went on. And by the time I got to the stage, I was like, I don't know if I can do the show. Ran out the back and like projectile vomited everything that I had all over the place. And then I started having convulsions. I was Whoa. that sick. Like it was really weird. And the, my two roadies are holding me down. So I didn't like bite my tongue or smash my head. It was really oh, wow. freaky. Mm -hmm. I ended up, you know, waking up in the hospital. And a few days later, I got a $7,000 bill in the, in the thing. It was for the ambulance and for the three or four hours that I was in their care right and of course i didn't even know at the time i was so fresh off the boat i didn't know i needed health insurance you know i mean i'd heard of it of course mm. but it wasn't like the sort of thing you jump off the boat and go okay let's get my health insurance in order who should i be calling <clears> right <throat> and it cost me so much money i was like oh my goodness like yeah. how, how can people sleep welcome right? to like, america are, it's a lot yeah of times I, people get shot and they're like call an uber <laughs> Don't yeah. call 911 <clears throat> get an uber yeah. Uh, it's true yeah larry well health care is is a huge part of it but the, the real thing that really gripes me is the education system yeah. um not only do we not fund it sometimes when we fund it we take half of the funds and give them to religious schools in the form of vouchers uh we are we're basically cutting the legs out from under our education system and I would like to quote at this point, uh, Sam Seaborn from West Wing. Have you ever watched that series? He said. Like, like 15 times. Yeah. Education <laughs> is the silver bullet. Education is everything. We don't need little changes. We need gigantic, monumental changes. Schools should be palaces. The competition for best teachers should be fierce. They should be take, making six-figure salaries. Schools should be incredibly expensive for the government but absolutely free of charge for its citizens, just like national f defense. And mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it is the silver bullet. Um, so the, 
good side of that is if we had more edu- quality, high quality education, a lot of the problems that come with developing a good healthcare system, yeah. or at least observing in how to improve and and modify the one that we have now, could be m- more strategically implemented because we'd have a society that would care about more long term benefits right. and, and quality <clears throat> of care for people that don't necessarily just look like them but people who don't look like them people who have very different states and if i've never been in the military but i've gone through college and i understand that there are people who've been veterans and and there's these issues that are going on outside my country then i might care more about how can we take care of our veterans more like just by being break the value of college for me was in part learning new things but meeting different kinds of people and working with them in a collaborative atmosphere towards a singular goal, towards improving ourselves intellectually. So, uh, Larry, go ahead. Yeah, just to answer your listener, um, he, they have been praying for that for how long? And what are, the re- <laughs> what, are the, what are the results? Larry, That's what I'm saying. Alone. Larry, leave him alone. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you for the comments. Keep leaving comments. Yeah. Don't mind Larry. Don't mind Larry. Go ahead, Keith. I'm just a grumpy old I, I was man. Just gonna so. say, <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were talking about how to get off my lawn. All right, all right. That's right. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say that that you, you talk about it was brilliant because you were you sort of alluded a little bit to other countries' ways they do things, and the the to me the 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 um the the what's the word I'm looking for? There's a word and I'm just blanking on it, like unil, unilir Banana. or something. Bananas. There it is. See, bananas you again. You've got it right yeah, twice yeah. in one. Um, <laughs> on it's Amer- America's inability, I'll use my own words, to think outside the box. And by b- the box, I mean their own country. So what I mean is like, if I was running a country tomorrow, and this is why I, I said this, uh, am I allowed to talk about the big orange uh, elephant in the room? Uh, I capital T. We, we really oh, shouldn't. We yeah. really shouldn't. But... Okay, well, I'll not. I'll, let's just say that... Um, you can do I was you can do talking it. on a Fine. previous pod about how I would choose my daughter right now that you just met there briefly that 10 years old to run the country more efficiently. Mm. And sure. I didn't mean Absolutely. that hyperbolically. I meant no, no, that no, no, real, no. like literally, because the first thing she would do is come to me or come to somebody she trusts and say, I need to make a decision about this that they're asking me. Who do yeah. I talk to? Right. And I would say, I would go talk to, is this on, you know, um, climate change and how we can best do that? Let's talk to the, the main guys at NASA and the main guys at this and this and this and, and get the consensus and go with that. And yeah. you will probably be on the right path. And my point was, is that healthcare, hmm. there are some countries that are doing it right. Yeah. And oh, yes, yeah. it costs them, it costs them a lot of their GDP, but you know what, because their citizens are not fearing for their lives on a daily basis of what happens if I get sick. They also quite often, if they've got that, they've also got some set of some sort of free health, uh, free education. They are also putting more money back into the economy as healthy, educated citizens that are not worried about you know, uh, you know, some kind of serious illness because they know it will be taken care of. If we could just look outside, if Americans could look outside and go, I'll take the German idea of this. I'll take the British version of this. I'll take Scandinavian. Scandinav- mm-hmm. Scandin- Let's just take all the bloody Scandinavian stuff. It's, yeah. If you pretty much take it, you'll be good. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I just wish they could look outside. But because of that American elitism thing where they think they're the greatest country in the world at all times, they don't, they don't, it doesn't process that they can have better ideas elsewhere. And of course, the further right you go, the more that feeling increases and the less you right. would ever take advice from someone else, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, I would also say, you know, Scandinavia has some really, really cool stuff in terms of efficiency uh, and work culture, too. I learned a lot from them, but I'd also say, I think there's an advantageous point from a capitalistic society and outlook to have people be misinformed or uninformed and work hard regardless, right? Because- Or even undereducated. Right, because then you've locked in a, what do you call it? A voting pool. And the more educated, well, we see this every single time, the more educated people become, the less likely they are to vote for people wearing red hats, right? And you don't have to look anywhere more than like our state, which is uh, my state's Tennessee. Uh, Larry also lives in Tennessee. Right. Uh, 
we have a wide swath of rural areas from east to west across Tennessee. However, the most populous locations in the major cities, Knoxville, Nashville, Memphis, Chattanooga, they tend to be incredibly liberal. And you can know this mm. by just and looking blue. at the life and the license plate. Because in, in, in America, in, in Tennessee, if you don't believe in God, if you do not believe in God, your license plate starts with letters. And if you believe in God, your license plate starts with numbers. <laughs> that's a choice you that's a choice you can make here in Tennessee. To have a God we trust on your license plate or not. And the reason why is because there's a cosmetic option for when you register for your license plates that asks, hey, we have the state license plate that says just the standard text. But if you want the in we believe in God or uh, God believes, in God we trust in God we trust. If you want that on your license plate, you can get the version that has that starts with numbers. It looks the same, but it's from a state perspective different enough that's not going to be a diff, uh, big deal. And you can click this button and get that license plate. So all the people who believe in God will get those. And when you drive around, especially in rural areas, it's like numbers, 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 numbers. But as soon as I'm like driving up to a bigger town, it goes or even in a Kroger parking lot, it goes directly from number number letter 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 you're yeah. like oh and it's more populous like there's like 10 maybe 100 times more people living in the bigger cities than there are in these smaller cities right. so and My... by virtue of the fact that they're interacting with different kinds of people all the time they're going to better schools they have That's... these higher yeah. paying jobs and it's trickling out into the rural areas and causing change but as that happens more and more those rural areas become more impacted by the different ideas, different cultures, and they stop being as conservative as they uh, as they originally were. So if you are a person who banks on people not being liberal and being conservative, it's in your best interest to make sure that these people stay far apart from each other as much as possible, stay in their low paying sectors as much as possible, populate as much as possible because you got to refill that <laughs> you got to refill that pool and ideally not get as educated so you'll make different priorities you'll say we need to bomb these people because that's good rather than i need to educate the the people who are my voting electorate there's a lot of other ties to it but i do see and maybe it's just me doom and glooming but i do see a very uh concerted interest in keeping people not educated as a factor of staying in control, if I have control, Keith, what do you got? That's a good point, uh, Larry. You were you had something? Oh no, go ahead. He covered oh, it. I was just going to say, I <clears throat> I find that to be a a really strong point against religion too. Actually, oh, is yeah, the yeah, idea yeah, of yeah, yeah. the greatest populated areas are generally highly liberal, and I would always use that with arguments and with family members here and stuff that I argue with not going to go into detail but um it's basically like isn't there something doesn't that set alarm bells off in a conservative person's mind that wait a minute these people that are living together in close proximity and there's a there's a gay person there's a trans person there's a black person there's a white person there's an asian person there's all this stuff and they all, all end up loving each other and going like, what's that happening on the corner? Oh, there's two dudes making out. Cool. Anyway, I was talking. You see what I mean? Mm. Like, there's absolutely no reaction to the other anymore. And it's this fear of the other is gone. And when fear of the other is gone, look what you get. Yes. You get utopias. Or at least you would have closer to utopias if the other stuff, like education and healthcare and stuff, was also taken care of too, right? So... I, I use that as an argument of like, hey, look, conservatism does not work because it all it leads to is us and them thinking. Mm -hmm. It's right. all it ever leads to is there's this tribe and this tribe. Obviously, I'm, the tr tribe doesn't fit anymore in our societies, but it kind of still is the word tribe if you think about it. It's still people like to belong to something and think that the people that aren't like me are somehow evil or less worthy or um, are just inherently bad. That, w that doesn't happen in cities, or at least, you know, the, the percentage of, of that thinking mm. is minimal. Yeah, and it's, it's always surprising to me how much of that dividing line between conservatism and liberalism is marked by religion. Uh, mainly, I guess, because religions want it the old way. They don't want change. Their, their laws and, and uh, what is, morals and and values are all set in concrete, which makes them conservative. Uh, it defines the word conservative yeah. at, at that point. 
imagine want... you were talking to somebody. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Finish. The, finish up. I was just gonna say it's like when you talk to somebody, when you see somebody like I don't know if you're. I, let's say that the current speaker of the house and you hear him talk he sounds like he literally walked out of 1955 like he's currently in 1955 and that's too liberal for him <laughs> and mm -hmm. you think about if it was 1955 right now the uh, somebody that's say in their 60s at that point some young kid in 1955 who's listening to elvis or whatever thinks that person's going oh, i wish it was 1900 it was better than you know, everything was better then in a conservative frame of mind, whereas right. I think it gets everything is better tomorrow. It's all if we do. work toward it, give up on yeah. prayer. <laughs> well, we're getting close to the end of the show. Uh, we we had, uh, yeah, we had a pretty extended mid show break. I think we have enough time for a couple of rounds of did this come from God, a tyrant, <laughs> or a Disney? a movie princess <laughs> <laughs> consider go this for a, it. a blind taste study and i'm going to throw out quotes i'm going to go back and forth between larry and keith and i'd love to see how you guys rack up whether or not these quotes that i'm giving you came from a god which could be from any biblical text uh a, a human tyrant that existed in history or a disney movie princess all right and we'll 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 probably do this as a close up and we'll we'll keep the score out going for whoever else comes into the show. But Larry, you're first. Are you ready? Yeah. Remember your options are God, Human Tyrant, or Disney Movie Princess. You ready? All right. Okay. Here's your quote. One day you will wake up and there won't be any more time to do things you've always wanted to do it now. Hey, what are my options? Disney God, Princess God or what? Tyrant or Disney Movie Princess. One Princess. day you'll wake up and there won't be any more time to do the things you've always wanted. Do it now. Princess. Actually, it was a tyrant. It was a good try. That was from Stalin. Oh, it was it Stalin? Wow. <laughs> Keith, you're ready for your quote. Remember, your options are God, sure. tyrant, or Disney movie princess. Here's your quote. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it weren't so, I would have told you. You should give him the easy one. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that's a Jesus quote, I think. Oh, he got it. That is a Jesus quote. Yep. In my father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I would have told yeah. you. Do you think that's just how he said it at the time? I would have told you if there was. Yeah, my dad has a lot of mansions. He's pretty cool. He's an astronaut and a rock star. I, I would have told you that already. Okay. How do you uh, have mansions inside a house? That's the... I... <laughs> Don't worry Larry, here's your next one. Are you ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. It is not good that man should be alone. I'll make a helper fit for him. Oh, that was God. Oh, he got it. Good job. Good yeah. job. Larry. All right. Next the Garden one. of Eden. All right. Next one. Keith, when the character of man is not clear to you, look at his friends. When the character of a man is not clear to you, look at his friends. I'm going to say human tyrant. Oh, it's Disney princess. <laughs> ah. So close. It came from the movie Milan. Good job, though. Good job. Good job. Oh, I haven't seen that one. That's why oh, I'm going to say. Okay, okay. I you know what? It's a good point. It's a good point made, but oh, well. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Larry, here's our last round. I think you guys are tied right now. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. Uh, the next one is a bit. Okay. Here, here. All right. Here we go. It is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent but the one most responsive to change. Um, Tyrant? Yeah. So I am getting mine from uh, uh, a website that is called ChatGPT, and it has listed Charles Darwin as a human tyrant. In really? Oh, yeah, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. Which is fair. Because I, I, I was thinking that was Darwin, yeah, but I... It's, yeah, I, I just process of elimination. <laughs> All right. All right. Key simple. Here we go. You ready? All right. When the winds of change blow, some people build walls and others build windmills.
What are you thinking? Give me, give me your mental gymnastics. This is the I last mean, one. when the winds of change well, blow, some people build walls and others build windmills. That's, I mean, it doesn't sound like something the tyrant would say. Okay. It sounds like something a good person would say. So I'm going to say <laughs> Disney princess. Good job. Hey. <laughs> I'm glad it took so much like thinking. It's like, did that come from God? Because it sounded Wh like it came from a good Which person. Which Disney princess was it? <laughs> <laughs> that is a, uh, that's Pocahontas. Oh. Ooh, uh, again, ooh. haven't seen it. So. Okay. Okay. These are the but classics. These it, are it classics. made sense. It made, I loved how he was like, wait a second. That sounds like it's a good person. So it couldn't be God. I'm going to have to go for Disney. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah makes sense well job. not not that disney started out by a good person either oh, <laughs> if we're gonna go down that road larry yeah. we're we're at the end of the show but i'll say this we'll keep the scores going larry you're at two our guest keith simple you're at two we'll try to maintain this and uh have larry on the chopping block for, okay. for next time thank All you guys right. so much larry why don't you take us out um no final words keith where oh. are you showing coming up next time oh um again i I'll try to get on with you guys in the uh, maybe once a month. No, I was if talking I about you guys your website. Sure, anytime. But I was talking oh, about when you're okay. going to perform again or all that. So the cool, the cool thing today is all I want to mention is my bass player texted me while we're in the middle. I'm going to put it in the text. And he just said, by the way, dude, did you know that today is the fifth anniversary of our live Blu-ray DVD? Ooh. Um, And I just wanted to put – so I put, the I put the thing in there. It was our first live – uh, we recorded the whole thing on a steady, you know, steady cams and our, you know, Roman cameras and all this stuff. And um, it, we in, did our entire first album live from start to finish and put it put it on Blu-ray DVD. So okay. uh, yeah, that's, that's all I care about life. today. I just hope okay. you're having the time of your life with all yeah. this. This sounds like you, your 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 passions are finally into fruition where they are affecting other people. They're having a huge impact. And you're getting a lot of that out as well. You're traveling the world. You have a beautiful family. Like you're you're rocking it, dude. And I'm so glad that you spend some time in your awesome life with us on this show, where we can continue to lambast and 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 uh, what is the right word for it? Blaspheme together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Friends. you you yeah. might you might not believe me, but this is as much fun for me as what I was just doing a few hours ago <laughs> on stage <laughs> in front Very of a good. couple hundred people. I, I love this just as much. So we'll keep it up. Thank you guys. Absolutely. Keep yeah. it up. Ty, where can we find your stuff? I'm on Let's Chat on YouTube. Um, I've I've made an announcement to the people that I work with that I have this YouTube channel. They all wanted to see it. Uh the thing is, I imagine that there will be fluctuations in my subscribers based on off of sure. like the, the views. Though the thing is, I want the people who don't subscribe or the people who unsubscribe to know that they're still interacting with the person who has uh, who's non-religious, who is, you know, like not a white Southerner in Tennessee and has not, nothing but kindness and love in his heart and willing to work with other people uh, and have positive impacts on society. So even if you unsubscribe, you're still dealing with me on a daily day basis. So why not stay subscribed and continue to have uh, an ear open to some of the conversations that we're having on the show? Because I guarantee you, it'll help you broaden your perspectives. Sounds good. If not your Just heart. to remind just a reminder, you can find this show on podcasts everywhere. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, my, my main content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel is at Doubter5, and you can find my book atheism what's it all about on amazon remember everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real until then don't sweat it enjoy your life and we'll see you next wednesday night at seven o'clock on wozo radio here in knoxville say bye everybody bye everybody. bye bye guys